Uh, so hi, I'm Ambrush. Uh, what do you think about this code? What does it do? It does its work. Okay, now, what does it do? I gave you some comments even. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it is, but how do you know? Okay, now, now it's a bit better. Fast SQRT, what the hell is SQRT? Uh, nobody knows, uh, my father wouldn't know. Uh, so you cannot get away with just giving a nice name. Okay, now here we go. Uh, we have some documentation, we have some summary, and we have some longer documentation as well. So the first thing that we learn from this is that um, with good documentation, uh, like you just cannot get, get away uh, without naming the function right. And even if you think that you name the function right, um, you cannot get away without writing documentation because some people might not understand that particular concept. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, the key idea of this, of this talk is uh, uh, making libraries easy to uh, use and hard to misuse. And this has been discussed already a lot of times. Uh, I would recommend these resources. Um, A little bit of introduction. Uh, I'm Ambrush. I'm uh, studying at UDELF and uh, working at Finland Research Center. Um, and now I'm working on an open source language called Hilo. And yeah. Uh, two, two months ago, I started uh, a software project at university uh, where we, we needed to reach out to a company. And I reached out to the Hilo team. Uh, do you want two months of free work? Uh, yeah, sure. And then uh, they just mentored us for two months and uh, uh, they, they, they allowed us to work, work on this project and it is a very nice experience. Uh, so we wrote a doc documentation compiler uh, with our university team, uh, with Marcus, Alex, Avi and uh, Thomas. Um, and this basically was a, was a tool that um, extracted documentation from source code and create the website for it. Um, so a little intro, like Wall has been named, uh, uh, Hilo was named Wall, but then uh, some people were trying to sue them because there's a name overlap, now it's called Hilo. Uh, Hilo is also the name of this thing, I don't know. Uh, maybe we will be sued as well. Uh, it's just time, so like, uh, keep updated. Um, okay, so when writing documentation, we need to take care, um, who are you writing it for? Who are the readers? Um, there are sometimes people who are just seeking information, they know what they are looking for, and there are people who just want to stumble upon some stuff uh, they want to explore, who are information stumblers. Uh, they need more, more of an overview of stuff, and if you're shell seekers, they need more structure, and they need easy lookup and search functionalities. Um, Type of documentation includes API documentation, like um, documenting a particular symbol, a module, um, as a conceptual documentation uh, where you can write overviews, um, tutorials, landing pages such as readme's uh, inside folders, um, design documents, although they are usually not documented within uh, source code, but some collaborative platform like Google Docs or uh, whatever, and technical specification, uh, which is like maybe a result of a design document that, um, and that can be altered as well inside source control. And uh, from software engineering at, at Google, um, it's a very good book, I really recommend it. Um, we learned that um, it's very nice if all documentation can be altered at the same place because then uh, it's, it has a very low entry of um, editing and any, anybody can contribute to the documentation uh, without um, asking some people. Um, they can be also re reviewed easily. Um, the pe people who originally wrote it can be notified. So yeah, that's, that's very nice. Um, yeah, how we implemented all of these techniques. Um, so we, we allow to document API uh, using inline comments in the source files. Uh, we allow creating articles, which are standalone markdown files, sort of. Uh, and we allow uploading any supplementary content in, in form of a PDF file um, or any, any kind of file, you can just link to it. Mm. We 
provide easy ways to link to code symbols within articles and within code commands. So that's when you start refactoring some stuff, uh, it's compile time checked whether um, the documentation hasn't been made obsolete. Um, you can also link to articles, so you don't have to describe everything in your symbol documentation. If it's something long, such as examples, you can just... Ooh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll let you finish. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good one. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, then you don't have to, um, then you don't have to write everything uh, at the same place, but you can just link to an external file and people who are not interested in, they can just look at there. Uh, this is how the command looks. Uh, it's very much like Swift syntax. Uh, this is our architecture. We um, hook to the um, highest compiler front end um, then we extract documentation into a structured format. It's very interesting because we never need to actually deallocate memory. We just like, uh, um, save into a structure. Um, even though everything has value semantics, we don't really use it because it's just saving data. And as soon as the co compiler um, returns, it's basically uh, all the memory is treated by the operating system. So we don't really have to worry about uh, memory management. And finally, there's website generation, uh, which is just uh, creating HTML files. And finally, um, the standard library of Hilo is available in hilo.web.app, uh, so you can take a look and uh, show it. So you can see all the members and uh, you can even click on types and um, everything is linked together. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you.